Early lighthouse illumination evolved over the years, from wood fires to tallow candles, then various forms of oil lamps. The use of parabolic reflectors began in the late 1700s. The reflectors, first constructed of segmented glass, were eventually manufactured out of copper and coated in silver. Reflectors were exclusively used in the United States until the mid-1800s. In 1819, Augustin Fresnel revolutionized lighthouse illumination by inventing and designing a series of lenses and prisms that collected and magnified light from a single light source and directed it seaward. His early bullseye lens design was constructed of segmented straight pieces of glass and evolved to curve segments. Eventually, these were manufactured in complete rings. Fresnel's first lens design consisted of only the center dioptric or bullseye and belt lenses manufactured in glass. The upper and lower reflecting zones were accomplished by a series of silvered mirrors. In this updated design, you can see the lower reflecting zone contain the familiar looking catadioptric prisms. In the early 1800s, there were only a handful of factories in Europe. The factories were set up to cast large rings of glass, then machine the rings, cutting the triangular faces with large horizontal lathes. Complete rings were manufactured for the bullseye lenses, but the reflecting prisms were cut into sections after machining. The lenses were shipped to the United States, most of them being received at the Staten Island Depot. Lighthouse service Lampus serviced the lenses, but none of them were built in the United States until the late 1800s to early 1900s by the Macbeth Evans Glass Company. The art of manufacturing these magnificent lenses ended in the early 1900s. Nearly 100 years have passed, and although the production method has been modernized, these lenses are now being replicated for use in restored lighthouses and once again used as aids to navigation. The current design of the Fresnel lens is accomplished with the use of 3D computer programs. The computer models are used to create patterns to cut the brass frame by the use of a water jet process. The water jet cutter pierces through the brass with a high pressure stream of water and abrasives. Once the frames are cut, the machining process begins by drilling, tapping, and countersinking all of the mounting and attachment holes. After the frames are machined, the polishing process begins. This is accomplished by a series of sanding steps, starting with a coarse grit paper, moving to finer grits, and eventually finishing with metal polishing compounds. The polished frame can now be assembled, 
preparing it for prism installation. Cotton gloves are now used at this point to prevent the frame from tarnishing. Computer models of the prisms are now used for the machining process. CNC milling machines are used to rough out the shape of each prism. The machine prisms are inspected by a scanning process, then compare the actual machine scan to the computer model. A light coat of paint is applied to begin the sanding process. The paint acts as a visual aid to make sure all the machine marks are removed and the surface is clean and smooth. A series of sanding steps is then performed, completing each prism with a buffing and polishing process to optical clarity. The final step is to apply the UV protectant coating and tinting process to give the prism the greenish hue that is apparent in historic lenses. The next step is to install the prisms into the brass framework. This is done by a series of epoxies and glass glazing compounds to set the prisms and isolate them from the brass framework. The final step is to assemble all the components, which would include the lens base, service wheels for a fixed lens, the lens optical panels, hinge to hang the door,
and finally reproduction lamp to complete the lens.